Welcome everyone to Riverside Park United Methodist Church, where our mission is to empower others to live life abundantly in Christ. Now we have a few uh, announcements this morning. The first is that registration is now open for Vacation Bible School. Uh, we, Ms. Pastor Emily wants you to know that we still need a few volunteers, so if you can serve, email kids at riversideparkumc.com. College-aged and young adults are invited to contact Caitlin Fuller to participate in summer gatherings like the upcoming trip to the Audubon. Sounds awesome. We will have a virtual parent check-in on Sunday, June 27th at 3 p.m. Uh, if you are participating in that, you can email kids at riversideparkumc.com. Um, and now please let us remember the gift of community. Um, and take a moment to wave to one another, um, greet one another online, and center your hearts as we gather for worship.
Please join me in our call to worship by reading along with the bold text. As we gather for worship, may God form in us mission. As we gather for worship, may God move mission in us. And what does abundant life look like in Christ? And let us proclaim our faith in Christ together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from 2 Timothy 1, 3 through 7. I'm grateful to God, whom I worship with a clear conscience as my ancestors did, when I, when I remember you constantly in my prayers day and night. Recalling your tears, I long to see you so that I may be filled with joy. I am reminded of your sincere faith a faith that lived first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure lives in you. For this reason, I remind you to rekindle the gift of God that is within you through the laying on of my hands. For God did not give us a spirit of cowardice, but rather a spirit of power and of love and of self-discipline. This is the word of God for the people of God. And now we invite Pastor Haley <laughs> and all kids fifth grade and younger to come forward for our children's message. Good morning, everyone. Come on up. I'm going to sit here on the top step here while I'm waiting for y'all to come. Miss Dakota was sick this morning, so I'm filling in for her. Hello, what's your name? I am Haley. Hi, Haley. What's your name? Reese Arthritis. Reese, nice to meet you. Hi, Reese. Hi, Diana. And you actually started off a good question for what we're going to talk about this morning, which is how we get to know new people. And I want to know from you guys, what are some good questions we can ask new people we meet so we can get to know them? What's the first question you asked me, Reese? What's your name? What's your name? That's a great place to start. What are some other questions we can ask new people to get to know them? How are you? Do you think you'll know somebody really well with just those two questions, or do we need to ask more questions? We need to ask more questions. We need to ask more questions. What are some more questions we can ask? Mm -hmm. I, tell, I tell them what's your, I tell them um, how, how old are you, but oh, 
how old are you? You don't ask an older woman that thing. You all know that. What else can you ask? Oh, yeah, if it's in church, you can ask if somebody invited them to church or invited them to a place. What else? What about, um, what do you like to do? What do you like to do, Reese? I like to play Minecraft. You like to play Minecraft? I wouldn't have known. And I like to play Roblox, too. Oh, very cool. What do you like to do? Mm -hmm. Soccer. Wow. What about you? What do you like to do? Play with dolls. Play with your dolls. So today we're going to talk about asking questions, and I'm going to tell y'all a little bit about how Jesus was a really good question asker. And in the service, I'm going to tell you how many times Jesus asked questions. So after the service is over, if you can remember, I'd love for y'all to come up and tell me if y'all remember how many times. Um, because Miss Dakota's here, we won't have river kids, but there are some bags in the back if y'all want to get those for during service. And we're going to pray, okay? So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for helping us make new friends. Help us to ask good questions to get to know those around us. Amen. All right, y'all can go back to your seats. Thank you so much. Oh, 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 oh,
to join me in a word of prayer. I will take some time uh, in between our prayer and saying the Lord's Prayer for some silence for you to lift up those prayers that are on your heart. O oh God, our King, by the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, on the first day of the week, you conquered sin, put death to flight, and gave us the hope of everlasting life. Redeem all our days by this victory. Forgive our sins, banish our fears, make us bold to praise you and to do your will, and steal, steal us to wait for the consummation of your kingdom on that last and great day. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Will you hear our prayers now? Let us offer these prayers uh, and the prayers of those around us by saying together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us bring our gifts and offerings to God. You can put gifts in the offering plates here in the sanctuary or send checks to the church office or give online. This month's giving will be especially helpful to cover supplies and materials for our Vacation Bible School.
you have done in our lives and in the lives of your church here at Riverside Park. We pray that the gifts that have been offered today will be used and magnified to do your glorious works so that we as a church might be able to empower others to live abundantly in Christ. We ask these things in your holy name, in the one who sustains us, in the one who provides for us, in the one who loves us. Amen. Please. 
We are uh, going to read first our scripture this morning, which comes from uh, chapter 61 of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord to display his glory. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Strangers shall, shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall till your land and dress your vines. But you shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. You shall enjoy the wealth of the nations, and in their riches you shall glory, because their shame was doubled, and dishonor was proclaimed as their lot. Therefore, they shall possess a double portion. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Well, I, um, <clears throat> I don't know how many of you remember me. About two years ago, Pastor Emily uh, was on leave after um, giving birth to Maddie, and I was able to serve in that interim time, which means not only has it been two years since I've seen you, but also Maddie's two years old, so that's crazy how that happens. <laughs> And some of you might remember, if you remember me then, that I had a little toddler going up and down the aisles after service, and now he is somehow three and a half years old, and we have another one and a half year old that toddles up and down the aisles. Um, and so it's just wonderful to be back with you again, to be able to share a little bit about what God has been doing in uh, the ministry of Campus to City Wesley Foundation, which is uh, your campus ministry in the Northeast District. Um, and maybe to just give you a fun update on uh, our lives, because three and a half is very different from one and a half. And we've hit, and I, the last time I got a really great reaction in the nine o'clock service, so I know y'all can do better. We have hit the question stage. <laughs> Y'all know what I mean by the question stage, right? I mean, we can't drive to school in the morning without hitting a stoplight and hearing, why are we stopping, Mommy? And then, you know, inevitably, I'll say, well, there's a red light. And then the next question happens. Who knows what the next question is? Why? Why, why is there a red light? Why is this uh, happening to us? <laughs> Which, if we're in a hurry, is how I feel sometimes. Um... But yes, we're in that, st that uh, stage where no matter how effectively you answer that question, you will inevitably get the next question and the next question and the next question. Which brings me to 
Pastor Haley's life hack, which is I've, I've figured out, at least for this time being, how to stop the never-ending question, why, why, why? Now, if I come back in two years, this will have stopped working. But it's working right now. So, I, instead of answering the question, I ask him what he thinks the answer to the question is. And inevitably, he answers it, and he doesn't ask why afterwards. Now, not only uh, is it just really fun to hear his answers to a ton of questions that he comes up with, but it changes the way that I interact with him in these question moments. Instead of feeling that wearing on your patience when that inevitable why comes up, I'm instead really interested in hearing how a three and a half year old's mind works and that joy I get to see in his face when he realizes he knows something, that he knows the answer to that question. And some of you who might be teachers, it's that feeling you get, that eureka moment that has like made you stay in it again and again and again working with students, right? It's just this wonderful experience. And while I did call it Pastor Haley's Life Hack, I did not come up with it on my own. And I don't know if he was the first, but I'll just have to say, a person really great at this was Jesus. Now, in the Gospels, it may not surprise you that Jesus asks way more questions than he answers. But out of the 183 questions he is asked by disciples, by Pharisees and Sadducees, by people uh, who are coming to him from the crowd and asking for healing, do you know how many questions he answers? Three. Of 183 questions, 2% get answered. The rest of them receive more questions. And in fact, throughout all four Gospels, Jesus asks 307 questions. He knows how to build disciples, and it is through deep and meaningful question asking. Now, what does this have to do with our passage in Isaiah, which has no questions in it? Not so much directly. Um, however, it is CCW's guiding verse. Uh, this verse from 61 verse 4. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. We have uh, boiled that down into a mission and a ministry for young adults to rebuild, renew, and restore. That we hope that college-age young adults across Northeast Florida learn this important missional discipleship skill. That they will build up spaces where God is found, that they'll renew their faith, and that they'll restore the mission of the church and the spaces they're in to make disciples on their campuses, or in their workplaces, or in their dorms, all around them. And the work starts, really, in asking good questions. Now, CCW does offer weekly worship on our campuses. We do have opportunities for Bible studies. We do have um, opportunities for community and other types of study and learning. But I believe the real ministry happens one-on-one -on -one with students over a coffee guided by two questions that we always ask them. How is your soul? And what's the last thing you heard God say? In those two questions, we can very quickly unpack what's going on in the lives of our students. Deeper than a how are you and I'm fine type answer, but a how is your soul and how are you responding to the circumstances happening to you on campus or around you. And asking them what's the last thing they heard God say as a reminder, as a part of discipleship, that God is always speaking. And sometimes 
Our students will take these questions and inevitably lead us into places where we can ask more questions. Students who feel held and students who have begun the work of discipleship and growing their faith may end up asking questions of me as an associate director about their careers, choices they should make in relationships, whether significant others or family, questions about caring for their own mental, physical, or spiritual health, and even questions about whether or not they are called into ministry. And what's very tempting in the midst of these questions is to give just the most brilliant advice that I could possibly give. You know, that, that advice that, you know, you've had those lived experiences. And maybe you've done this. Maybe you've had somebody in your life reach out to you for advice and just, it was impeccable. You had the answer for everything in that advice. And have you had this experience where you've given this incredible, impeccable advice out of your deep well of life experience, and then you follow up with that person and they didn't take it? <laughs> it's happened, right? A, a time or two. I mean, you know, your advice is good. People are going to want to take it. But a time or two, you can think of that person who went on to, to learn things the hard way, right? Now, I'm sure this wasn't the case for you, but sometimes what I find happens when I rush to advice is that I've forgotten to ask some really important questions. Questions that might encourage someone to uh, share a little bit more about the scenario, to share the things that they might have, tr have tried to address things that are going on in their lives. Maybe to share their readiness to actually change what's happening in their lives. On and on it can go. But what I tend to find is that if I ask really, really good questions, and the student or the young adult that I'm working with um, is able to answer them on their own, the advice that they arrive at within themselves and the answer to that question, they are much more likely to take than the amazing advice that I could give them. Now, let's be honest, this process is tedious. Asking questions takes much longer than giving your very cherished advice and being able to just tell people, just cut to the point. And yet you might arrive at the same place, even if it takes an additional 30, 45 minutes or an hour of your time over coffee. And yet I find that in that work of asking good questions uh, is where we find maybe an example of what you as a church are being called to do in your mission statement that y'all have arrived at together. Empowering others. It is in these questions that the students that I work with are empowered to do their own work, to make their own change, to arrive at their own answers, and to instead of rely on me as the source of the answer to their questions, Maybe to go to a source that we share, to go to God themselves, and to um, strengthen that spiritual relationship they have. This is the challenge I think that we all have as disciples of following Jesus and asking really, really good questions, and then trusting God to help us all arrive at the correct answers. In fact, it's through asking good questions that over our annual conference this weekend, we were able to celebrate the first CCW to be commissioned as an elder in the Florida Conference of the United Methodist Church. This is very exciting. And even in the midst of a pandemic, I've had so many students who have been considering their own calls to ministry, and I am very excited about the ways that they want to rebuild, renew, and restore uh, their communities and the church. Asking good questions can be hard. Asking good questions can cause us to be patient, cause us to have to 
be humble and that we don't have the answers. But I think asking good questions is how we can truly make disciples. And I would encourage you all to pray for the strength and the curiosity to be able to ask questions of those around you and to see how that might help you fulfill the mission to empower others to live abundantly, abundant lives in Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's pray together. God, we give you thanks for who you are, for the one who created the world and created us in your image. Maybe part of that image is curiosity. We pray that the Spirit would grow this curiosity so that we might be able to ask questions, so that we might be able to allow you to help us seek answers and that you might be able to help us to be disciples and to build up a new generation of disciples who would seek for your transformation in this community. Help us to carry out your mission. In your name we pray. Amen.